As long as you have someone who's there, you can actually bypass it, bypass facial recognition, bypass pupils, fingerprints, all of those various different things. But once this happens, like right here, yeah, now once people have been alerted, they only got so much time because law enforcement is now going to be in route and uh, the chase is gonna definitely be on. I don't know how big it is back east or so forth, but it's so much here that we're actually telling people, hey, just do what the robbers tell you to do. Hey everybody, Chris the Cop here. Welcome back. We have another exciting episode of Experts React. Well, what am I reacting to? Well, it's that awesome game called Payday 3. Ooh, I actually, like, jumped over. When I uh, played the original, or not the original, when I played Payday 2, what I always love is the uh, the tools that they get to have. Uh, sometimes these tools are uh, a little bit uh, more cumbersome in the real life, but Hey, in video games, I think there is no such thing as uh, being too cumbersome. So uh, I always like, too, the fact that this game doesn't really start until you put your mask on. And then once you put your mask on, it's like, let's go. Guard might come up from the bottom of the stairs. I'm going to wait up here this time. It sounds like they've made a couple of previous mistakes in their gameplay listening to their conversation. So uh, quite interesting. I think I might as well be right here. I like I like that they're trying to do the stealth thing that's actually pretty cool I, I would hope that people be just a little bit more aware of their surroundings instead of this guy like being able to pop up around uh, with a gun but uh, yeah it is what it is now the interesting premise about the payday series is from what I understand is that it's pretty much these are kind of like Robin Hood type of characters where they're bad good guys good bad guys however you want to uh, you know throw it out there but it's really the system that is messed up and corrupt and they're just doing what they got to do yeah so I don't really know the back backstory to uh, Payday 3. I do understand it's something to the effect that they're back in business again and, uh, you know, they're going to start doing some heists. Let's see. I think we just, we can get around this. Is there some type of technology where they have digital lock breakers and stuff like that? I'm going to say yes, there is. Um, given the, uh, you know, the, the advances in technology and so forth, I would think they'd just be a little bit more complicated as opposed to the way they are presented in games. But there are definitely various different tools. I mean, we if we actually go back into how people broke into safe from your original safe crackers, I mean, it was really filled. They were feeling the combination and then that click. And then it got to using stethoscopes and other sound devices and now we're at those electronic devices that uh, enable people to get past those combinations and then of course people have moved away from actual combination type of locks and they go to the more digital ones but then there's ways to get past those so in reality no matter how much tech is out there there's always going to be other tech to beat that tech as that's like said right there, the prime example, biometric scanner. Well, it only works if there's no one there that is actually with the biometrics. As long as you have someone who's there, you can actually bypass it, bypass facial recognition, bypass pupils, fingerprints, all of those various different things. Stamp cards. And here's the thing. It's what we tell people when, if they find themselves in this type of situation, especially like jewelry stores out, you know, a lot of people, well, I should say not a lot of people. If you're in Southern California, you know that there's a lot of smash and grabs. That is like a huge thing out here in Southern California. California. I don't know how big it is back east or so forth, but it's so much here that we're actually telling people, hey, just do what the robbers tell you to do. You know, go with it, give them what they want. Your life is not worth this property, not worth the money in there, because in reality, it should be all insured. So why risk your life for this? But yeah, that's like I said, that's what, uh, you know, we, we actually see these. Now, now, here's a fortunate part out here in California. While some suspects have been armed with handguns, a lot of are just utilizing the smash and grab, baseball bats, crowbars, and running in, maybe one person's arm to just kind of like scare people to do what they want them to do. But this is an actual regular occurrence now. And it's that's the sad part. It's, it's actually too much of a regular occurrence now where we're actually becoming numb to it. But once this happens, like right here, yeah, now once people have been alerted, they only got so much time because law enforcement is now going to be in route and uh, the chase is going to definitely be on. I, I've actually had several opportunities where we came across the jewelry robbers as they're getting into their vehicles and it was one hell of a pursuit and getting them into custody was pretty freaking awesome. So uh, this is some exciting stuff stuff when this stuff happens because they don't want to get caught. They got so many felonies against them that if they're convicted, they're going to go to prison for a very, very long time. Yeah, this is not, this is a whole lot of bad right here. Taking hostages and stuff. You are, you're done if we catch you. Uh, so they're bringing everybody inside to have more hostages inside. Yep, you guys are definitely going loud now. Might as well go for it and get the hell out of there. Yeah, I love this stealth, dude. It's so cool. 
Yeah, so on the realism part on this, so on the realism part on this part is Patrol would definitely not go running in like this. And quite simply because as soon as the first rounds went off, it would be one of those things where they would actually return fire and take cover. But Patrol is not going to uh, lose their advantage by trying to walk up onto the actual jewelry store and try to engage the suspects, especially not knowing if there's any hostages inside and stuff like that. This would be one of those ones, depending on where you work, if you had a SWAT team, the SWAT team would be activated, but patrol would take that surround approach and surround and contain and then deal with the suspects as they came out. A prime example of that is the North Hollywood, uh, North Hollywood bank robbery, where the suspects exited, they were engaged with officers, and then they kind of retreated back a little bit but it was pretty much that surrounding of them unfortunately at that point in that in that actual robbery the police were uh outgunned so they could not take the suspects down but in today's world where police officers are armed with uh, assault rifles shotguns with slug rounds and various other type of devices patrol could do very well for themselves on holding these guys down or stopping them from getting away um in a car or something like that so but about 20 years ago that didn't exist today patrol would be a lot more successful in containing and holding these guys while maybe the SWAT team arrives or maybe while additional officers arrive but yeah this single officer coming down and interacting with them yeah definitely not going to happen like that type of stuff right there definitely not going to happen because that, that's exactly what would happen right here they'd have the advantage they have the high ground and they'd be able just to take police officers out as they hop the wall so uh, but it's a game it's a game I, I never fault a game for being a game I enjoy a good game myself I mean you know we could sit here and critique you know uh, zombies in games and it's like well zombies aren't real so this is just here for our entertainment factor and um, I quite honestly even when I play these games it's like I get kind of maniacal myself where like hey let's try to rack up the body count <laughs> it's just like it's quite funny it's quite funny you know it's it's uh, it's interesting to see I think had that been like a real scenario where a gr that grenade went off those guys would have been down for a bit especially in that room the concussion of that even a frag grenade would have been enough to stun them so due to the fact that they're just playing a the game they don't understand I mean they of course you have to be there but i've had frag grenades you know stun grenades go off within you know three or four feet and it's a lot i mean it hits you so much to the point that i, I even remember in swat school we had to throw a uh, flashbang after flashbang after flashbang during um training and at the point in time you just had you just had such a massive headache because of the concussion just constantly hitting you but and even even one or two flashbangs could definitely do that and but then like um and as a lot of tactical players know there are so many different types types of grenades out there. You got frag grenades, you got thing balls, you got flashbangs, you got CS gas, blah, 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 blah. So there's different ones, but the, the typical, just like a frag grenade that disorientates you, that would be enough that it would. And in that, in that situation, they probably would be disoriented for at least a good, maybe 20, 30 seconds, depending on how close they were to the, uh, the shock. In reference to the shield, if that's a rifle rated shield, that'll hold up pretty well against their firepower. However, rifle rated shields are very, very heavy. Sometimes they're so heavy that they are actually on wheels. You just don't produce one. The shields that most patrol carry and some SWAT teams uh, can handle some rifle rounds, but not long term. So they're usually better for handguns, but they are heavy, but they, they do work. But they're very cumbersome. They're not as agile as you see in video games. What's, what's uh, interesting about their gameplay is I, I've actually seen other players that are really tactically sound. They play a lot and they, they use a lot of actually real live tactics uh, as far as like clearing rooms, going into rooms, and then when it comes to going loud and then interacting with the police outside of the buildings, they do a pretty good job by sticking together using the cover. These guys aren't really doing that. That's that's all right though. I mean, they're, they're obviously having some fun, but there are, I've, I've watched some great gameplay from other people when, uh, when they do their high well, like on this, what we're watching here is like we're watching people rappel down and stuff like that. Yeah, not so much. At this point in time, once the first rounds were fired, you would get everybody responding in. I mean, if a, if a department had, you know, 50 officers, 100 officers, they're all responding to this situation, especially like with, with the amount of anarchy. These guys are uh, going just nonstop shooting, shooting and killing cops. You'd have other jurisdictions, other, other people coming from other places, you know, responding in as well, just because, you know, that's what happens. That's exactly what happens. I
Oh, a little grenade launcher there. That's actually a real tool that law enforcement uses, <clears throat> but we have a what we call a 40 millimeter on it. Um, it's a foam foam uh, grenade that when it, it, you can shoot someone at point blank that knocks the wind out of them. Really good effective, but you know there are a military version to that that shoots actual grenades out that explode. We just don't use it for that. I think we can use it for CS gas though. I don't know about that. I mean, that, that would be a true scenario as far as taking out the power if you were going to do that during the day. But a lot of systems today are on backup battery power. So you'd have to actually take that out as well. We'll go, like, we'll respond to burglaries that happened the night before. And then the, you know, the owner calls us out because uh, what happens is, is though their power is cut off, the battery system is not. So the burglars, the alarm goes off. Or even more so, when the power goes, gets cut, then the alarm gets set because it's on a backup battery system. So there are a lot of different systems out there that have taken into the account that someone might cut the power. And if these are small businesses doing that, I could only imagine what major banks and major other major businesses are doing when it comes to that. So I always go back to like Die Hard. Remember Die Hard? Die Hard, they had to cut the power for an entire block to get those locks going. So obviously there are things like that that are in play that, I mean, I don't know if that would really happen, but just kind of shows you the sophistication that some systems have that can once again be bypassed by technology. That's the other part I love about that like this is that no one sees the person crouching around. But you know, I will say this one about this payday. This one looks a little bit boxier than the previous version. I, I mean, that's just my, that was my overall feeling that I saw right when we started watching this or when I started watching this. It just seems this game's just a little bit more pixelated than other previous versions, but that could be just me. You know, me personally, if I if I was being stealthy, I would take my time getting into a room. I know what they're doing is they're trying to get to the subject before they could turn around on them. So that's what they're trying to do here. But I would think that you'd be a little bit more methodical about getting into the room than anything. Yeah, see, that's the uh, that's probably the one of the unrealistic parts is that well, that guy would have heard something too. He would have heard you, regardless that there's a silence on there, a silencer on the gun. You would still hear the gunfire as well as you start hearing bodies drop. So uh, that part is the little unrealistic part there. I, I mean, I've had an MP5 with a silencer, or I should say, a suppressor on it for many, many years, and you could definitely know that a, a gun was fired. It's not like a true suppressed sound. So yeah, these people would already know what was going on by that point time. So on here, we're seeing that they're wearing latex gloves. Latex gloves are pretty good. I mean, they're not going to leave fingerprints. However, there are other uh, there are other ways that law enforcement can use latex gloves if they're found at the crime scene. So they don't do exactly what a lot of people think that they do, especially these days with DNA. So that is one of the things that fingerprints are great. Don't get me wrong. Fingerprints are great, but man, DNA is that much better. So it's all the world today is all about DNA because I always go back to the movie uh, Gattaca. We're constantly shedding hairs falling off, skins falling off. So we're constantly leaving our DNA everywhere we go. So that's why DNA is so huge. I mean, what do they say? Like what, like 75% of dust is human skin? Like, <laughs> so when you go across someone's house you never want to dust it for them like hey you got some dust here because you're picking up their skin <laughs> when we talk about like cyber attacks and dna it's almost the same thing because everything we do on the internet leaves breadcrumbs I mean, everything i mean yes you can use a vpn server you go to the dark web all that type of stuff but there are crumbs that's the part that that they're crumbs and that's even like people who are um, you know bad people you know um they pick up those crumbs as well you know when it comes to you know other people and so forth like that but i don't want to say that there's like a hundred percent that crimes could be solved but there are definitely those crumbs left behind that can point law enforcement especially the federal authorities because they're really the ones with the huge resources to to do that and they oftentimes don't even acknowledge the how they solve the crime based on that for or based on that those ones and zero dna but there's a lot out there there's a lot there's a lot with the emails i don't think a lot of people realize i'll give you a prime example back when the internet i mean because i was i was a young person when the internet evolved and we used to get emails the headers were that big you know the headers would show all the ip addresses that would bounce you know the the email went to this ip address went to this ip address this ip address boom 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 and finally ended up in your inbox and now that's not there anymore it's still there it still exists though because you can open up an email and you could actually have your software outlook like says just throw outlook out there show the header that's all digital that's the dna of that email where it originated from the ip address that it started 
from and then everything else in, that coincides with that. So I, I think a lot of people forget that that stuff is still there. We just have minimized it now. So by that, you know, Payday 3 looks like they're still kind of doing the same thing um, with the game, which it, that, that I mean, it, it is what it is, because if you think about it, if you talk about the GTA series, it's all about it started off as like, you know, Grand Theft Auto, but there was a story behind it. You know, there's characters and their storyline. So I'm going to say that Payday 3 kind of has that same thing where we have our previous characters that are now back together again. And now what story are we going to tell while we do what we love to do? And that's rob banks, jewelry halls and businesses. So it's just a matter of telling that story in between doing those fun things and being able to buy some cool gear with all the money that we try to make. Because that's actually, oh, I made a half a million dollars. Man, there's some heist that you, man, you win tens of millions of dollars and you're like, you can buy a lot of cool stuff. So I know that's what part of it is about as well. So all right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this episode of Experts React. If you like this type of content, you're going to definitely want to follow this channel on both Facebook and YouTube. You can follow me on my own YouTube channel at Chris the Cop. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, this is Chris the Cop reminding all of you.